Kambam is a CAM package. The basic principle is you take a computer drawing, a CAD file, and you can configure various operations and finally transform it into a G-code file that you can use on your CNC mill or laser cutter. Let's go over the interface. So we've got menus here. Here you can save, open, all the usual stuff. Here you can set the different views and what's shown and not shown. Here you can edit uh, shapes you have in the work area, as well as copy and paste. Here you can draw the various basic shapes. You can select shapes and add machining operations to them. Here you can find your settings and a very useful tool to measure parts. Here you can find the shortcuts to all of these. Here you can set the units. We'll be using millimeters. And these are the basic shapes and the basic operations as shortcuts. Here we've got the different layers for the currently displayed drawing. So here we've got only one layer and many polylines in it, but you can add new layers, for example. And here we'll have all our machining operations that we can sort and edit. Here you'll find your system configurations. And in here, you'll find the different properties of each of your shapes and each of your machining operations that you can edit. Finally, here you'll find the different shapes in your CAD file that you can select and edit, as well as when you have some, your machining operations. In the lower right, you'll also find the current position the mouse is pointing at, which can be very useful. And finally, here you'll have various messages or errors Kanban is telling you. You can open two types of files in Kambam. You can open Kambam files, like this one. Kambam files contain basic shapes, as well as machining operations. You can also open DXF files. DXF files too are made of a series of shapes. Note that uh, when using Kambam, if you want to add an operation to a shape, you need that shape to be continuous. So like these shapes are not continuous. They are separate shapes, you can see here. So what you want to do is select them all, right click, Edit, join, here render uh, selecting a tolerance, that's uh, how far 2.7 to be to be joined. Okay, and now you can see this outside shapes is a single polyline. And we can add a machining operation to it. These are the basic shapes you can draw in Kanban. Uh, you can draw polylines. Polylines are just series of points linked by, linked by lines. Click Enter to close the shape. You can also edit a shape by double clicking it and dragging and dropping these little handles. Enter to close the shape. Also note, you can press Shift while moving and your points will stick to the grid. The second shape you can make is a basic circle. You create a circle simply by clicking in the center, then, then clicking to drag the diameter. Escape to, to close the tool. We won't uh, look at point list here. You can also draw rectangles. You click for one corner, then click for the opposite corner. You can also draw text. Beyond drawing basic shapes, Kanban allows you to apply many operations to them. For example, you access these operations by selecting a shape and right-clicking. Most basic one is to move a shape. To move a shape, you simply click on any point, then on any second point, and you've moved your shape by that distance. You can also resize a shape. You can also rotate a shape. To rotate a shape, simply select the center of your rotation, a first point for the reference angle, and then a second point. Next, you can align shapes. You can mirror a shape, select a mirror line, and you mirror about it. You've also got some more advanced operations, such as array copy, polar array copy. This one lets you create an array of the same shape or a circle with several of the same shapes around it. You can center a part 
Beyond transformations, you can also do several operations to edit a part, such as exploding it. Exploding a shape is the inverse of joining, so if you've got, say, a rectangle, it's going to transform it into several lines. Let's make it a rectangle again by joining. You can also offset a part, which will create a second part with an offset here of one millimeter. You can also do unions like this. You can also find the intersection of two parts. Here, a new polyline. You can also trim an object. To trim an object, select the first object, the object you want to trim, press enter. Then select the object you want to trim it with, press enter. And then select inside or outside. We'll do inside here with I. And we've trimmed this first object using this second object. We can also add a fillet to an object. So for example, here, let's select this polyline. Do edit, fillet. Okay. And we've added a fillet with a one millimeter radius. We can also find the intersection point of two shapes. So for example, let's select these two shapes. Edit, intersection points. Okay. And Kanban has added two points, one here and one here at the intersection points. One other thing we can do is to select the two shapes, to edit, break at intersections. And now we've got several shapes all broken at the intersection points. We can also transform a shape to a polyline or a region. Finally, we've got access to all our basic drawing tools. Uh, some tools here are you, for example, to fill a region. So let's say we select this shape and we do inside offset with a one millimeter. We can do fills like this, which looks like a pocket operation. So this is it for the drawing operations. The next ones are adding machining operations. So let's go over the basic machining operations. Let's say we've got our part here and we want to add a few operations to it. First, always make sure all your shapes are closed. If they are not, do edit, join, and you'll get a closed shape. The first operation you can create here is a profile. So let's create one. Here in this little window, you'll find all the parameters for this new operation you've created. The operation is attached to a specific part. You can have several parts in a file. Here, this is the first profile for this part. Um, let's go over all the options. You can always enable or disable a machining operation, so that's pretty useful. As this is a profile, you can choose to cut outside the part or inside the part. Here we cut outside, we're going to be separating the part from the rest of the worksheet. You can name it. And very importantly, you can select which primitive ID the machining operation applies to. So here, this machining operation applies to primitive ID 127, which is this one. But there are plenty of others, and if we want to add or remove a primitive ID, we can do it here by selecting them or deselecting them, then pressing Enter to escape. These parameters determine how we're going to cut the part. The clearance plane is how high above the part you're going to go uh, when you're not cutting. Here I'll use 4. The depth increment is how far you're going to plunge each step. The final depth increment is how far you're going to go for the final step. This is for example if we want to do something like finishing. The stock surface is how high the stock starts at. I typically use zero but uh, you might use uh, the thickness of your stock for example. And finally the target depth which must always be a negative number. 
if you don't input a negative number, it will remind you, is how far you're going to be plunging into the part. So here we want to cut a 10 millimeters thick delving part. So we're going to input minus 10. The cut feed rate is how fast you're going to cut in millimeters per minute. So we don't really want to go too fast here. So we're going to go 800 millimeters per minute. The plunge feed rate is how fast the spindle is going to plunge into your part. Here we'll use 300. Here you can set custom G code you want to execute at the beginning and end of your file. The footer is for the end of the file and the header is for the beginning of the file. You can choose a different start point from 0, 0, 0. I usually just stick with 0, 0, 0. And you can change your work plane if you're working in a different work plane. The holding tabs features is very important when working on a CNC router, pretty much on a CNC router when you're done cutting your part, unless you're using something like vacuum, part is not going to be held by anything. You can add this feature, holding tabs, which is going to make sure small tabs keep the part attached to the stock. So here we're going to say automatic holding tabs with a width of three millimeters and a height of three millimeters. We say we want at least six tabs. We say we want at least three tabs and a maximum of six tabs, and we want square tabs. Note now if we generate the toolpaths, you can see our holding tabs that we're going to keep the path attached. Here you can add lead in and lead out moves. This is not very important on a CNC router, but if you're creating something like metal, it probably matters. Here you can see we set a tangent lead in move. Here we've got various canonous kind of options. Collision detection makes sure it joins adjacent toolpaths together. And corner other cut makes sure it goes into corners to make sure everything is cut. Cut ordering is pretty important. You need to choose if you do level first or depth first. This is if you are cutting several shapes with a single operation. If you choose level first, it will do all shapes at a given level, then go down to the next level. And if you do depth first, it will stick with a single shape, go all the way down into that shape, and then move on onto the next shape. Here you can select if this is a roofing or finishing pass. This is mostly used if you have automatic speed setup. Here you can configure your spindle direction and speed. Uh, we're not setting anything because our spindle is manual, but if you set a value here, it will send the right M3 and M5 G codes to set up your spindle. Tape over is pretty important. It's very similar to what you'll do with pockets. This defines cut width, that is how wide our cut is going to be. Let's say for the sake of the example that our cut width is 40, this is it's going to be this wide. And the step over is how much from zero to one we are going to step over a previous pass. So here if I go and generate tool pass. So now that we have a 30 millimeter cut width and a 0.8 step over, we're going to be doing passes to go 30 millimeters wide. Finally, you can set diameter of your tool. Here we'll be using a 8 millimeter end mill. If you got a catalog of tools, you can choose a tool by the number as well as profile. The next operation we're going to learn is the pocket. So to add operations to shapes, simply select the shapes. Once your shapes are selected, click on the pocket icon. A new pocket operation is created with as primitive ID the list of the shapes you provided. So like for the profile, you can enable or disable your operation. A lot of the options are going to be similar, but some differ. You can name it too. Again, we need to choose the clearance plane. The next operation we see is engraving. So you need to set your clearance plane, depth increment, stock surface and target depth. That's going to be the same as for example for a profile. Your cut feed rate and plush feed rate, same. These options don't change. And finally, you set your tool diameter here. So it's pretty much like a profile, but with less options since you're just following the shape. The next operation you're going to be using is drilling operation. Simply select a series of 
points or holes. If your holes aren't circles, but let's say squares or something like that, it's going to use the center of the shape to drill the hole. The clearance plate, depth increment, stock surface, and target depth are the same as for profile or engraving. These options are specific to drilling though. You can enter a custom script for your drilling. For example, if you want to do pecking, you can specify custom scripts. See the Kanban documentation for this. You can have drill leader. You can select your drilling method. You need to enter the diameter of the hole and select if your spiral is going to have a flat base or not. Here you set your feed rate. And finally, you still have to set your tool diameter since that's going to impact the shape of the spiral that, that will be generated. So these are the basic operations you can create in Kanban. Before we generate the G-code for this file, we're going to need to move it to make sure it's inside our stock so it doesn't go out. Finally, once everything is set up, we can generate toolpath for all operations and finally produce a G-code file. Once we have our G-code file, we can send it to the Spruce board using something like BCNC or the web interface and execute it.